The Bible says we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him. In other words, God has this habit of turning things around and turning the painful things around. The things meant to harm you, he has this habit of turning them around for your good. So whether tomorrow holds great promise or great disappointment, my life is in God's hands. I may face difficult times, but I have hope and faith in the one above. Hallelujah. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a position where you needed help? Well, we've all been there. You might have needed a place to stay for a while, or you might have needed some money to tie you over, or maybe you might have needed help to land a job. What I do know is, at one point or another, life will place you in a position where you need help. You might need help with a child. You might need help casting out a demon. You might need help overcoming a challenge. I know that one way or another you will need help but here's the thing. Getting help from people often comes with strings attached. When someone helps you out, it's not always for free. It comes with the expectation of either you remember what I did for you or one day I might need your help so just remember this favor. However, I have good news for you. There is a God who offers you help with no strings attached. There is a God in heaven who will offer you aid. He will give you support without any pressure or any expectation that you could ever pay him back. They say the darkest hour of night is just before the break of dawn. What does this mean? It means that things or situations will be at their worst just before they get better. And I know this to be true because the Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Finding hope when things aren't okay can prove to be difficult sometimes. And maybe you're in your darkest hour. Maybe you're right in the middle of the darkest hour in your life. Well, let me tell you what I found in my walk with Jesus. Weeping doesn't do it for the night because we all have to endure something. Some type of pain and some type of test. We all have to carry our cross. But as a child of God, in my deepest hour of pain, in the hour that I come to face my darkest sorrow, I have hope. I still have hope and the source of my hope is in the word of the Lord. I look at Paul and Silas. They were in a dark place in prison, badly beaten and in chains. But in their darkest hour and in their midnight hour, what did they do? They decided to worship God. You see, in the darkest times of your life, your praise to God should be the loudest. Let God know your hope and faith is in him. Let the enemy know you're not afraid of the dark. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So whatever situation you're going through, whatever challenge you're facing, be it in your marriage, in your health or within yourself, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him. All throughout the Bible, there are people who have been through tough and painful situations. But those tough and painful situations all offered an opportunity for God to demonstrate that he is the ultimate healer. He is the most superior form of protection. He is the one who can restore and make a garden from a desert. He is the only one who can favor someone who's been rejected and lift them up so that they can dine on a table in the presence of their enemies. Saints, believe in God. There is a reason for the season you're in right now. If Joseph wasn't rejected by his brothers, if he wasn't stripped and thrown into a pit, if he wasn't sold as a slave, would Joseph have ever known that God can take someone who was rejected by his own family members and favored that person so much so that he could become one of the most powerful men in the land at that time? Think about it. If Job had not lost everything, if he hadn't lost his sons and daughters, if he hadn't lost his ox and his donkeys, his sheep and his wealth, if he had not lost his health even then, would Job have ever known that God can restore double what the enemy stole? Think about that too. If Daniel wasn't thrown in a lion's den, would he have ever known that God's protection is far better and far superior than anything else in this world? Paul and Silas, if they were never arrested and placed in chains, tell me how could they have known that God's power can set anyone free from any type of bondage? Where's your faith? 
A setback is usually a setup by God for a bigger comeback. Going through pain or disappointments is often a sign that God has a better plan for you. He has a greater purpose for you even if you don't understand it. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is just the thing we need when we can't see the outcome. When God seems distant, we need to have faith that he has never left our side, and he never will. We hope for deliverance. We hope for safety. We hope for peace and we can have assurance that these things will come to pass through God. So what do you do when you're lost and hopeless? You keep the faith. When there's no end in sight, when that storm feels like it's never ending, what do you do? You keep the faith. David spoke about the help offered by God by saying in Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Zephaniah 3 verse 17 says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Should you find yourself in need of help, I have a recommendation. Look to Jesus. Should you find yourself in need of reinforcements in a battle, the Lord has a host of angels at his command. Should you find yourself in need of strength or in need of comfort, Jesus Christ said in John 14 verse 26, But the Helper the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Now if you've ever read Psalm 121 in its entirety, you'll notice that as the chapter ends, in verses 7 and 8, the word preserve is used repeatedly. The Bible reads the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. Three times we're told that the Lord will preserve us. And to preserve is to maintain. It means to take care of and to look after. In other words, God has told us that in all situations, he will take care of you. And you're going out and you're coming in, the Lord will look after you. So remember this, saints, when you find yourself in need of any help, look to Jesus. Repeat Psalm 23 after me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.